but they began investigating immediately. The evidence would further show that through text messages, through text messages that we know and that we have, Zaniah and this defendant were going to meet after school on January the 9th. We know that she did indeed meet up with the defendant that we're charging in this case. We also know that several people close to Mr. Butts, who we were charging later, saw them together in several different locations, people that he knew well. We have evidence that at 9.30 p.m. on that day, that Mr. We, we, we have our suspicions. The unrelated charges the man is being held on are two counts of criminal conduct with a person under 13 years old. And he previously served seven years in prison for involvement with a murder. All right, what's up with it, y'all? So look, man, I'm back again with another video, right? And before I jump into the video, I just want to tell everybody out there that I hope that y'all are having a good day today, or y'all did have a good day today, or y'all will have a good day today. Just depending on when you see this video or when I post this video. But anyway, it goes, I'm wishing y'all nothing but the best in every aspect of your life. And I'm also sending y'all nothing but peace, blessings, and prosperous energy y'all way. And I'm also sending that same thing to y'all family as well because I know a lot of people are going through things right now and they don't have a lot of people to send them some good, genuine, positive love. And I'm going to be the one to do that. And I genuinely mean what I'm saying. So, yes, if y'all want to say that back to me, I do appreciate that as well. But I'm really just sending this out to y'all, man, because I see a lot of people going through different things and they, and they need their love, man. You know, so it is what it is. And when I say anything that I just said, it's only to my supporters and to those who reciprocate the same energy back to me, like I just said a while ago. But let's get straight into this situation at hand because we got a lot of stuff to talk about and even more stuff to watch. So listen, basically, long story short, I want to start this off by saying RIP to Nazaya Harris, who was a 13-year-old little girl who lost her life in Detroit due to the fact of dealing with a weird fucker by the name of Jarvis Butts. He's a 41-year-old dude. I can't call him a man because he don't deserve that title. But yes, he has a history of messing with multiple people, right, that are children. And listen, I also want to say RIP to Naziah's father because he didn't get a chance to witness nothing that's about to take place right now. He ended up losing his life as we're in the midst of this going on. And I know that's got to be one of the worst feelings to pass away, not knowing what happened to your daughter, and knowing that potentially she could be gone in the worst way. You feel me? But yes, this weird fucker by the name of Jarvis, who is 41 years old, actually has been dealing with kids. He actually went to jail also missing with a kid now listen what's so crazy about this situation is that you know they're calling him a professional groomsman he's been grooming children for the longest he actually was messing with his own child and it's so crazy to me that you want a child this bad he actually went to jail did seven years got out and was on the same thing now i want to say this as well because i see a lot of people trying to victim blame a damn child which is weird to me in my personal opinion saying that she shouldn't have been doing this and doing that you got to realize that she is the child he is the adult He's supposed to be looking out for her best interest in life. There's no way in the head you should be blaming her. She didn't know what the hell was going on. You got to think you got to be a certain age to actually comprehend life. So, yes, you got to understand that. Stop victim blaming kids, you weird fucker. Now, if you do that, that's on you. If you're a supporter of mine, I just ain't rocking with it. That shit weird to me, my personal opinion. But, yes, um, she ended up, you know, getting pregnant by him. They actually found evidence showing that he was the father of the child father of the child he was actually trying to get rid of the child as well and i think that's why he took her life and that's my personal opinion and i'm sticking with it because of her age he knew that people were going to find out and different things like that and it's just crazy that a lot of people out here really want children this bad to the point where they're willing to lose everything including their own damn life to just get a little bit of pleasure i don't even understand how you can get pleasure out of this there would be some of the worst torturous things to think about and to do you know what I'm saying? To actually be messing with kids, bro. You weird as fuck. But hey, look. Another thing that took place was that when this all came out, other children came out. Well, one of them is grown right now. But other people came out saying certain things about them as well. You know what I'm saying? Being involved with him. And I just feel like that this type of person right here needs to be taken out. There's no need to go to court. There's no need to do none of that. Because you can see what he's going to continue doing for the rest of his life if he ever gets out. He was on the sexual registry list and stuff like that. And I just want to say this right here as well, too. That a lot of people need to take the time out to understand that people that they're dealing with need a background check. I don't give a damn, especially if they're going to be in your personal space. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I'm not here to victim shame or victim blame them in no way, shape, form, or fashion because they're basically just trying to say that he was a family friend or associated with the family. But I just want to say that anybody that's watching these videos that I've been doing recently need to understand and take heed to these situations. You're not being presented these type of scenarios for nothing take heed pay attention women and men because people be thinking that it's all men and it be these women as well these people they like these little ass boys and talking about how cute and fine they is and stuff like that and they chill
children, babies and stuff like that, I don't get that, you know. Now saying somebody is handsome, cute and stuff like that is understandable, but nowadays they be saying they sexy and fine and they just be weird to me. I don't know, the word, the word is weird right now. But hey, anyway, go. we finna get into the video. I left out a lot of details. I just had to give y'all a basic synopsis over this. Like I said before, RP to her and RP to her father because he lost his life as well in the midst of this. But yeah, I see a lot of people wondering how he was around the children and that's what they're saying. He was just somebody that the family knew. And I heard also that, um, you know, he has a baby by her cousin, something like that too. So, you know, we'll figure out more. I just found out a lot of stuff while ago. But hey, let's go ahead and get into it. Protest outside of Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. Family demanding answers in the case of Messiah Harris and hoping for charges. Kiwana is designed. Oh yeah, for those who are new here to my channel, I do do a sequence of events. So this was what initially was going on. But yes, he's in jail right now. I have a press conference coming up. I actually have um, him in court as well, where they were talking about certain things that took place. It's different things that's going on, so you'll know. But yes, this is a lengthy video, so it has all the details from then until now. I just have to let y'all know. Let's go. And Harris's cousin. My nickname was for her was Pretty Eyes. That's what I called her. But it's been four months since she's seen those pretty eyes or the 13 year old girl's smile. What's really hard is not being able to give her a proper home going that she deserves. Naziah was last seen getting off the school bus on Cornwell at Three Mile on Detroit's east side January 9th. Police have scoured the city and other Metro Detroit communities in their exhaustive search. Her family is struggling but still praying that Naziah might still be alive. There's reason for us to believe that the worst, but we're trying to hope for the best. A possible lead, Detroit police now have a 41-year-old man in custody, but he hasn't been charged in Naziah's disappearance. Do you think this is it? I absolutely do. Obviously, we're not fully relieved because they haven't charged him. We don't know if he does, if he has something to do with it or not. Obviously, as her family and what we know about him, we, we, we have our suspicions. The unrelated charges the man is being held on are two counts of criminal conduct with a person under 13 years old. And he previously served seven years in prison for involvement with a minor. Kiwana says she and other family members were wary of this man and told Child Protective Services and police. I hope we never see a day outside of prison. I hope we never walk the streets again. Because beyond Isaiah, there's other young ladies. I'm not going to see any names on the record that he has hurt. But he has. There's many victims. Kiwana hopes anyone who is hurt by this man in question comes forward so he can face justice and potentially help Naziah's case. They're digging to get answers, but we want them, and we want them quick answers. You know, they have them in custody. You know, gigs up. Let's go. Let's go with these charges. You can call Crime Stoppers anonymously at 1 800 Speak Up. There is a $4,000 reward on the line. Scott Walchek, Fox News. Missing 13 year old Naziah Harris. Tonight, Detroit police tell us the suspect in her disappearance is behind bars from another case. It's been nearly nine months since Naziah was last seen getting off a school bus at Cornwall and Three Mile Drive. Well, since then, police searched a pond in Clinton Township and the Rouge River on Detroit's west side for any evidence. 7 News Detroit reporter Kimberly Craig is talking to some of Naziah's loved ones who believe the suspect is the same man they have suspected all along. The man who could soon be charged in the disappearance of 13 year old Naziah Harris is in his 40s and he's already been charged with the assault of a seven year old girl. Now to find out that with his history that he's been doing this all of these years, so God knows how many other children. It's been far too long and you know we're ready for some convictions. There's some of Messiah Harris's loved ones who for months have been holding out hope that she'd be found alive, but that hope for a safe return has changed into something they also fear. Messiah wasn't the type of young lady to just stay gone without making any contact with anyone. Mm -hmm. So that did it for me. They said it was a recovery from day one. The man believed to be at the center of the 13 year old's disappearance is on the sex offender registry after being convicted of crime against a child in 2005. And in March, after Naziah went missing, another teenage girl came forward to say the same man began to 
assault her in 2015 when she was just seven years old. He basically came home from prison and it seems like went right back to his same old activities. Sadly, Naziah's father, who had been battling health issues, recently died without ever finding out what investigators believe happened to his little girl. Details the rest of her family now waiting to hear, particularly Jarnell and Kawana, who say for years they've been trying to raise the alarm on the man who is now at the center of the case. So I see a lot of people were saying, and I know a lot of people are going to say, where was the father at? in this video as well and I'm just thinking that he was sick you know I haven't seen too much about him I'm going to look up more things about it a little bit later after this video but I just want to say that you know all the blaming and stuff really do be getting out of hand without the full context you know so like I said before he was grooming her he'd been grooming her so with that being said she probably was doing certain things that a lot of people didn't know nothing about you know what I'm saying and he was also talking to her on the school's tablet and one of her last pictures was her basically waving and the person who was speaking at the end who was the person speaking at the press conference she said something that i was thinking and it was just so crazy that she said that but in the picture she was waving it's like a hi but it really was like a bye you know what i'm saying because i think about everything in totality i'm really really like deep when it comes to certain things but i just want to say that a lot of the times when the situation is like this people really got to have some understanding and realize like damn these kids are groomed they're learning to be manipulative and different things from their groomer and i'm saying that she was because i don't know the depths of everything but i'm just saying have some grace for some people because a lot of the times man they don't be knowing what the hell be going on behind closed doors let's get back into it we have been adamant about not just letting the family know but child protective services know way before Gaziah came up missing. During this whole time, I found out there were two other CPS cases naming him um, in several incidences related to children, other than the one that I uh, reported. We just need closure. We, we absolutely need closure. In Detroit, Kimberly Craig. Wayne County prosecutor says a 13-year-old girl who has been missing since getting off her school bus in January was assaulted and killed and that the man responsible now faces charges. Well, they say this is the last known photo of Nazana Harris. She's inside her classroom smiling and waiting at the tablet. CBS News Detroit's Gina Vici has been following this story since the beginning. He joins us live with the latest developments after speaking with the girl's family. Gina. Yeah, Rochelle, I spoke to Naziah's family who says, sadly, this is what they feared all along, that she had been killed. But as you can imagine, this was still very difficult and heartbreaking to hear this information confirmed by the prosecutor and police. You just hope that it doesn't come true. And uh, unfortunately, in this instance, it was. Naziah Harris' aunt, Roxy, says she's been holding out hope, praying her niece was still alive somewhere. But sadly, her worst fear confirmed this morning. She says she had a bad feeling it was this man, 41-year-old Jarvis Butts, who had something to do with Naziah's disappearance. It was definitely a sense of uh, release and, and a little bit of peace to hear that the person who we suspected, you know, in the beginning um, has, has been brought forth. He was a classic and expert groomer. And the evidence shows overwhelmingly in this case that she is, in fact, deceased. The last time she was seen alive, was January the 9th of this year, 2024. Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy, alongside Detroit Police Chief James White, held a news conference today announcing charges against 41-year-old Jarvis Butts. Worthy says the evidence shows Naziah met up with Butts after school on January 9th, the last time she was seen alive. We know that she did indeed meet up with the defendant that we're charging in this case. We also know that several people close to Mr. Butts, who we were charging later, saw them together in several different locations, people that he knew well. We have evidence that at 9.30 p.m. on that day, that Mr. Butts checked into a motel and the Zaniah was never seen or heard from again. Butts has been locked up since February for an unrelated sexual assault charge and carrying a concealed weapon. Another shocking discovery about Harris's disappearance Worthy says the evidence shows a long history of Butts abusing her and text messages revealed he got her pregnant. And he knew she was pregnant. We know that she was also searching for ways to abort the baby. 
Investigators search neighborhoods, bodies of water, phone records, social media, and thousands of other pieces of evidence. Worthy says the evidence collected against Butts is thorough and overwhelming. Today we are charging Jarvis Butts with one count of first degree premeditated murder, one count of criminal sexual conduct in the second degree, and one count of child abuse of material. Worthy says Butts was very intentional about using young girls. Mr. Butts targeted and befriended women who had to have relationships with their young daughters. Now, a lot of people don't be believing that is what dudes are out her own. They think that they end up growing this lust for the child and different things like that. Not my supporters now. It's just for the people who be outside of us. Be thinking weirdo shit like that. You gotta realize and understand that these dudes be knowing what the hell they getting into. When they see them kids, they get a little bit more nicer. They get a little bit more manipulative and stuff like this. So you gotta be able to understand that these people are weird as hell. You gotta do your due diligence on these people. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that people can see certain things, but they're not looking deep enough. Because a lot of the times, man, you are overlooking what's needing to be seen right then and there, you know? But hey, I'm not trying to blame nobody in their situation. I'm just saying that, you know, you need to sit back and realize and understand that these dudes are out here looking for somebody to get close to so they can get close to their kids. They not all out here being genuine. You know, a lot of people be talking down on stepdads, but I commend them and stepmoms and stuff like that. But some people just want to be in these situations to be able to do things like this as well. So make sure you're taking your time when people stop jumping into relationships so damn fast. People be trying to get into somebody. People be trying to get into a relationship, fall in love and stuff like that. People be playing about falling in love in two, three days and shit like that. But that ain't healthy. That's really crazy and idiotic, especially if you got kids. There's no way in the head you need to be out here trying to you know, fall victim to love and lust and loneliness to the point where you just willy nilly falling in love at any drop of a dime. You know what I'm saying? That shit crazy, bro. Let's get back into it. He would have relationships with their mothers, but his true desire was to have with their young daughters. His true That's desire. That's what the evidence will show. Meanwhile, Messiah's family says they are devastated, but they do feel one step closer to learning exactly what happened to their loved one and why. We got some answers and we got some justice for her today. And um, hopefully when everything comes out in the trial, um, you know, we'll definitely be able to finally get that closure that we need. Now, Rochelle, to be clear, Naziah's body has not been found yet. And get this, Worthy also announced two other assault charges against Jarvis Bunch involving two other young girls under the age of 13. Meanwhile, he is expected to be arraigned tomorrow morning inside the 36th District Court for the disappearance and death of Nasai Harris. Back to you. This is a heartbreaking case here and learning that it's an expanded case. We'll certainly be following this for some time. Gina. Okay, so now this is him in court where they're breaking down certain things and talking about certain things. And right after that is the press conference that the police gave. But the real new updated conference is right after that as well. So y'all can stick around, watch the whole thing in totality so y'all can get the full uh, synopsis of everything I will be giving you updates in the future and stuff like that but there's no need for him to be living he needs to be taken out there's no way in the hill he should be going to the court or nothing you already went to jail you done did these things you keep on doing them you impregnate children you're taking lives what the hell are you needed for I don't advocate for violence but y'all already know I'm really the main channel to be talking about it not for an eye they need to go ahead and start giving these families the people who did certain things to their family you know what I'm saying give these people Give these people to the people who really want to do something to them. Stop giving their ass protection and sending them on to live life and stuff like that. Hell no. Nah. Unhand him to the family and let them do what they do if they want to do something. Because a lot of people are forgiving when it comes to certain situations. But for me, personally, to really sit back and be as visual as I am mentally as well, you know, yeah, I would want to do something to you because I be thinking about everything and talking about everything in depth. Because I can actually, I don't know, it's just some, I, I, y'all be saying I'm empath and stuff like that, but I can visualize me being the person who passing and stuff happening. I don't know, it's just crazy, but that's why I get so emotional and so tied into these type of stories because I put myself in their shoes, you feel me? But let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything I done said enough. I will holler at y'all later on another video. All right. Okay. This is calling case number. Mr. Butts has three cases. Case number. Two four zero five nine six one nine zero one. Houston, Michigan versus Jarvis Butts. Case number two four zero five nine six one eight zero one.
Houston Michigan versus Jarvis Bunch. And case number 2405961701, Houston Michigan versus Jarvis Bunch. Appearances from the people. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Tina Ripley on behalf of the people, P83688. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Matthew Mayfies on behalf of the people, P82796. Good afternoon. Okay, Ms. Quick. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Neighborhood Defender Service by Cheryl Quick, P83973 on behalf of Jarvis Butts. Uh, I believe co counsel is present, Ken Riggins. Yes, he is. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon to your staff. Neighborhood Defender Services by Ken Riggins, P82125 on behalf of Mr. Jarvis Butts, who stands with me to my right. Okay, Ms. Quick and Mr. Riggins, do you wait for Riggins? We do, Your Honor. Okay, Corporal Knight. Yes, Your Honor. Corporal Knight, do you on behalf of your client with respect to all three cases? My recommendation from the people. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, people are requesting a remand. On all three? Yes, Judge. Uh, can you give a, uh, just a brief summary for each case? Yes, Judge. Uh, I mean, very, very, relatively brief, yes. Sure, Judge. Uh, starting with uh, the case ending in 619, um, that is a criminal sexual conduct in the first degree um, with, counter, uh, with added charges of uh, criminal sexual conduct in the second degree. Um, that is for uh, Mr. Butt's biological daughter, um, and she was around eight or nine uh, when the touchings first started happening, and ten when she was passed. Um, Mr. Butts is a uh, habitual offender, fourth offense notice, mandatory 25 years, and he also has a prior conviction for uh, criminal sexual conduct in the third degree with a person 13 through 15. Okay, you back on another two cases, please. Yes, and as it relates to case uh, ending in 618, um, that is uh, one count of criminal conduct in the second degree. Um, he does have uh, the second offense notice on that, along with the habitual fourth offense, uh, mandatory 25. That case uh, is for the sexual assault of a um, four-year-old minor. She was four, year old, four years old at the time, um, and he, she was the daughter of uh, one of Mr. Buck's girlfriends at the time. Um, and I would believe her to have contracted chlamydia. And as it, as it relates to uh, the case ending in 617, uh, that case involves the missing 13-year-old, Naziah uh, Harris. Naziah went missing on January 9th in 2024 after last being seen alive with Jarvis Butts. Uh, Mr. Butts is a serial child evidence will show that Jarvis Butts has been seeing Nazia Harris since at least the fall of 2022 and that Nazia Harris was pregnant with Jarvis Butts' child on January 9th of 2024 and that Mr. Butts was aware of this pregnancy. Jarvis Butts was supposed to turn himself in on January 9th of 2024 to serve a year-long sentence for CCW. The state ultimately got moved to February 7th of 2024 allowing him the opportunity and time to take care of his Messiah Harris problem. And that's exactly what Mr. Butts did. While Messiah Harris's body has still not been found, the evidence recovered points to one only one devastating outcome. Although Jarvis Butts is currently serving a sentence for CCW, that's no excuse for his bond in this case to be anything but a remand. Jarvis Butts has been a convicted child since 2025, as I mentioned, or 2005, I'm sorry. And as I mentioned prior, he is uh, a habitual fourth uh, finder notice with a mandatory 25 years. Um, and if convicted of any of these charges in these cases, that is a mandatory 25. Um, and uh, he is an absolute danger to the community and all children. Uh, since getting out of prison, Jarvis Butts has continued to send children, resulting in now three active criminal conduct cases against minors, with no doubt many more out there. Uh, the people acknowledge that these charges are allegations at this point, but we're confident in these charges moving forward that the evidence will show that Jarvis Butts not only sexually assaulted and impregnated Naziah Harris, but that he ultimately killed her in order to cover up uh, the ongoing assaults and pregnancy. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Uh, for Ms. Quick or Mr. Reynolds, any um, response to the, the, the uh, question you made? Well, I will say all conjecture aside, the one thing she said that is true is Mr. Butts is currently under sentence. 
Um, as such, he is not eligible to be released, so we are not going to object to the bond at this time. Okay. Ms. Quick, is anything you want to add? I'm for Mr. Riggins. All right, court never heard an argument as the bond. A remand is provided under NCR 6.106, provided the people show a great presumption of guilt. I think they've more than met their burden. I will remand Mr. Butts in all three cases in custody of Wayne County Jail, other cases pending. Mr. Butts' next court date will be probable cause October 4th, preliminary examination October 10th, 1.5 p.m., at least tentatively scheduled now for the Judge King. Anything else for the record from either, any attorney? Not for the people, Judge, thank you. Not for the attorney. No, you're not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge. From uh, Detroit Public Schools Police Department, and to what brought us here today. On February 12th, uh, we had a briefing on uh, this missing child. Uh, yesterday, we had a much more comprehensive and detailed meeting uh, where he brought forth a number of different factors uh, as to uh, what occurred and what they had been working on. Um, we left that meeting with some uh, very serious concerns uh, about Nazaya's uh, safety, uh, and I'll bring up Chief Jackson at this time uh, to, to give you an overview, uh, and I'll be coming back up to talk about the details. Chief Jackson. Good afternoon. Uh, back on January 9th, uh, we believe Ms. Nazaya Harris did not return home from school. She was a student at Clark Elementary. Uh, January 10th, her family went about the process of reporting her missing. We began our investigation at that point. Uh, we began working back, following through her on her last known steps, possible person she was in contact with, some of her school-age friends, uh, gathering different information. Um, as we began to work back through that information with our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners, the information that we obtained has led us to this point here. Uh, at that point, we reached out to uh, Chief White to let him know the developments that we had. And uh, so at that point, we decided that this investigation had kind of gone past our the four walls of our, our building, and Chief White stepped in to help us out. Chief White. Good. Thank you, Chief. Uh, so again, after our meeting yesterday, um, we were very, very concerned. I made the decision at that time that we will take lead on this investigation. Uh, we'll be bringing in our local federal state partners, a very concerned community, uh, our board of police commissioners, our, our civic leaders, every single person uh, to assist us in bringing little uh, Nazaya home. Uh, that's the goal here is to do everything we can uh, to bring her home. Uh, you know, we have debriefed on a number of different factors. We're hopeful that we find her uh, well, um, but you know, we can't operate on hope. We have to operate on information, investigation, uh, and work. And that's what we're here uh, to do today with this incredible show of force uh, that we have at this time. Uh, I will bring up Deputy Chief uh, Kerry Sloan uh, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the aspects of the investigation at this time. But I will tell you that it is still early in the investigation on our part. Um, although DPS has done a number of different things, we are now doing a number of different things. We are actually, in fact, repeating some things uh, to lay eyes on exactly what aspect of the investigation uh, that we want to have some firsthand information on. Uh, so she's not going to be able to provide you granular detail at this time, uh, but we'll just give you an overview and highlight some of the things that we're going to be doing. Uh, first, we would like to express our deep concern for the welfare and safety of 13-year-old Naziah Harris, who has been missing since January 9th. I would like to ensure Naziah's family that DPD intends to utilize every possible resource that we have uh, to bring her home safely. Uh, as the Chief mentioned, we are currently working with our local, federal, and state partners uh, to establish exactly what occurred in this situation. At this point in the investigation, we are aggressively searching for Nazaya and examining every piece of evidence to understand what transpired. Uh, we are in the process of re-examining and re-interviewing all witnesses and anyone with any possible information uh, that can assist us in this investigation. DPD is committed to working this case until we locate Nazaya and we are asking the community for their help and anyone that has any information to reach out to the Detroit Police Department. 
I want to thank uh, the Detroit Police Department and uh, the, uh, the Detroit Public Schools uh, Police Department, those two chiefs for working together in a unified manner. I stand here in full support of this department Yo. and find our little precious child. And I ask everybody in this community to come together and rally with this department so that we can be able to uh, find our young sister safely, prayerfully. Thank you all for coming today. I want to start out this morning by introducing those that stand with me. To my far right, left, and your right, and who you are. Matthew Mays, the SBU unit. Tina Ripley, uh, the SBU unit, and Wayne Honeycraft as Matt and Tina will be trying the case. And good morning, Louisa Papalis. I'm also with the Special Victims Unit, the Deputy Chief. And good morning, Kelly Gleason. I'm the Chief of the Special Victims Unit. Good morning, Chief White. Good morning, Lieutenant Amber Robles, and have a bad missing person. Sergeant Shannon Jones, have a sight missing I have spent decades of my career looking at pictures of murdered people. When I was trying homicide cases for six straight years in, as an assistant prosecutor, I would spend hours thinking about the victim whose case I was getting ready to try, wondering how they spent their last weeks, their last days, their last hours, and their last minutes of their lives. What were they thinking about? Did they know that the end was near? And if it was someone they knew, what must, had they, be, what must they have been thinking as they were stabbed or whatever mechanism of death was used and confronted them with by the person they knew or loved. I can't imagine the thought that goes through their minds. But it's always, always a thousand times worse when the person is a child or a baby. Someone in the dawn of their lives who have begun to live their lives. The picture behind me is of Zaniah, and that will always be haunting because it was taken just a short time before the evidence shows that she was never seen or heard from again. It was taken by Naziah herself a selfie. That's the last known picture that we know about of her. And it was pointed out to me by one of the detectives on this case and by one of the prosecutors. She is smiling and waving and saying hello. But little did she know that she was really saying goodbye. We will provide to you later a very skeleton timeline of the time right before her death, before and after. Of course, the detail would be provided in court. The evidence shows overwhelmingly in this case that she is in fact deceased. The last time she was seen alive was January the 9th of this year, 2024, almost nine months ago. Her missing status was reported to the Detroit Public School Police Department by her grandmother on that very day when she never returned home from school. And again, that was January the 9th, 2024. In early February of 2024, the case was turned over to the Detroit Police Department Frankly, that should have happened right away. But they began investigating immediately. The evidence would further show that through text messages, through text messages that we know and that we have, Zaniah and this defendant were going to meet after school on January the 9th. We know that she did indeed meet up with the defendant that we're charging in this case. We also know that several people close to Mr. Butts, who we were charging later, saw them together in several different locations, people that he knew well. We have evidence that at 9.30 p.m. on that day that Mr. Butts checked into a motel and the Zaniah was never seen or heard from again. Not from her family, not from her schoolmates, not from her friends, not from social media where she was extremely active with her friends, not from teachers, no one. We know that she had no medical conditions that would cause a life-threatening medical emergency to her. And he, again, was the last person that saw her alive. She would have turned 14 years old just 10 days ago on September the 16th of 2024. And again, no one has seen or heard from her. You look at that face and you do not see the horrors that she had gone through in her short life. The exploitation, the molestations, the abuse, and the pregnancy that she was concealing. The evidence will show that from one of her text messages to and with Jarvis Butts. And we also know, the evidence will show, that there's no evidence of anyone else being the father of that child other than the defendant himself, who we charge today. And he knew she was pregnant. We know that she was also searching for ways to abort the baby. We know the explicit photos were requested by him of her and that she complied and sent them to her. All at the hands, we allege, 
the man we are charging with her death and also her long-term use. In our warrant review process that Matt and Tina and others put together, excellent work on that, video of 111 gigabytes, witnesses and witness statements, body-worn camera, and let me not forget, it was Tina and Matt's memo but the work of the Detroit Police Department. Anyway, we re reviewed 111 gigabytes of video, witnesses and witness statements, body-worn camera footage, surveillance video, police reports, documents, 19 gigabytes, medical records, search warrant returns, phone extractions, which came to 506 gigabytes. Today we are charging driver's butts with one count of first degree premeditated, one count of criminal conduct in the second degree, and one count of child abusive material. Today we are also charging Mr. Butts with more counts of criminal conduct on two more girls, yes girls, on two other separate cases. The girls in question now are 20 and 11 respectively today, but both were under the age of 13 years old at the time the offenses occurred that we're charging. We are charging that one victim who is now 20 years old, that from April of 2012 to April of 2014, it's alleged that, that, that Defendant Buck sexually assaulted the victim at a residence in Detroit. Further facts and evidence on that matter will be placed on the record at the preliminary examination. In that case, we charge Mr. Butts with criminal conduct, one count in the first degree, person under 13, defendant 17 or older. In that case, we are also charging Mr. Butts with three counts of criminal conduct in the second degree, person under 13, defendant 17 years or older. In the second criminal conduct case, well, I guess the third, that we're charging today, we are alleging that the victim who is now 13 years old, that from July 2015 through July 2017, we're alleging that he assaulted the victim at a residence in Detroit, and again, further facts and evidence will be developed at the preliminary examination. Defendant Butts have been charged with, uh, in that case, one count of criminal conduct in the second degree child under the age of 13, Mr. Butts over the age of 17. Based on all the evidence that I've laid out now and much more that will be, sh be shown later in court, based on all these cases we will present in court, Mr. Butts targeted and befriended women who had to have relationships with their young daughters. He would have relationships with their mothers, but his true desire was to have with their young daughters. That's what the evidence will show. He was a classic and expert groomer and it's incredibly sad, incredibly unspeakable, and we want to bring justice to her, to her and her family. I have to take this moment to say something to you. And this is not directed at all at Naziah's family, who by all accounts had many in her family that lo truly loved her. This is directed to everyone else listening to me now. We all must, we must be very careful who we let into our hearts and our homes and our lives, especially if you have children. We must be very careful who we have around our children and elders respectively. We must also be very careful who we leave our children with, even if they, even if, even, even if they are in a relation, relationship partners, family, and friends. I'll say that again. Even if they are relationship partners, families, or friends. Life can be hard enough at times, but when it comes to our children, we must be deliberative, we must be diligent, and laser focused on their safety. And sometimes we must, sometimes we must make decisions about them and their lives that we may not like and that they may not like, but it's for the betterment of them and their safety and their future. When something doesn't feel right, even if it's just that voice in your head, it usually isn't right. And sometimes when we are attentive and we do everything right by our children, things can still happen and still very, go, go very wrong despite our best efforts. This can happen to good watchers of children. But we must always ask ourselves at the end of each and every day, was I right by each member of my household in terms of their safety? Did I do right by my children? Now, of course, Mr. Butts is presumed innocent unless and until he was he's found guilty on each and every crime and count that we have charged today. We have been told this morning that the arraignment will be tomorrow, we think at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, but we don't have confirmation of that yet. But the arraignment, we are told, will happen tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. This is one of the most difficult cases uh, 
uh, that I have been a part of. Uh, and I'm just so very thankful to the detectives and the investigators in homicide. Uh, the tragedies that happened to this little girl uh, touches each and every one of us. Uh, and unfortunately, um, she lost her life at the hands of someone who should have been concerned about her safety. Uh, I just want to take a couple moments and thank Madam Prosecutor and her team for the amazing work, uh, the commitment, the hours that they put into this work. Uh, I want to thank our major crimes, missing persons, homicide, specifically Sergeant Jones uh, and Lieutenant Amber Roberson. When I, when I tell you the days and hours and the tenacity that they put into this work, um, it, it's not often that I'm, I'm not surprised by our officers, but when I saw the work and the hours and the time that they put in there, I was absolutely in awe at my weekly briefings and the time that they put into this case. Um, it is not an eight hour a day job. It, is a, a, it, it ends when they have to get a couple hours of sleep. And I will tell you with all the other things going on, uh, this case was always top of mind. Uh, certainly want to thank uh, DPS uh, for their assistance in transferring over some of the information that we were able to get from them uh, with this case. Uh, there were a number of people, our community uh, in particular, uh, even our Board of Police Commissioner Tamler, Tamara Liberty Smith, who was out knocking on doors and passing out flyers, all uh, with a desire uh, to bring uh, this little girl home to her family. Uh, quickly, as the investigation unfolded, uh, the officers realized uh, that was going to be very difficult. Uh, without going into great detail, uh, I will tell you, uh, as the prosecutors indicated, hours and hours and many gigabytes of information and phone records and, and knocking on doors and pulling video went into this investigation uh, and sadly we find ourselves where we are now but if there's any solace in any of this uh, is that we, we take a lesson from this uh, we make strong and good decisions for our children keep them out of harm's way we are not pointing out anything that someone did wrong we just want to make sure people do a lot more things right and again, Madam Prosecutor, thank you and your team for the work. All right, the Chief and I will take a few questions, if you have any. I have one. Um, how many journalists have access to the designer? He knew some of their family members, some of her family members. All I can and will say at this point that it started in 2022. So just for accuracy, this little girl's remains have never been found? No. Is there a thought? Her body has never been found. Well, if we knew that, we would certainly have a case that we weren't trying. We were trying without a body. Again, there was an incredible amount of material, and one of the reasons why lately I've been giving out amounts of material that we've been going through, because I think people sometimes just do not get it or understand about all the work that it takes by the investigators and by the prosecutors to put a case like this together. Whenever you have a case like this, where there has been no body found, it makes it more difficult and much more investigation must be done, because we have to be able to prove that the person is deceased. No, by law, I can't really comment on that because that would leave me in a place where I can't talk about it right now. Could things have maybe moved forward a little faster if the school police had got with the trick police right away? Yes. Can you talk a little more about No, I better not. I have strong opinions there. We, we are going to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she's dead, as we must do by law. I, 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 because we, no one's seen her, no friends, no family, no teachers, no medical conditions. Um, even on her birthday, 10 days ago, she contacted no one. This was a child that never missed school, but the school hasn't seen or heard from at, at all again. This is, a, this is a young girl who was very active on social media and crickets, nothing since January the 9th of 2024. Anything and we have other things too that will come out in court. Any cooperation I can't get into that.
No, because we don't. We can't do that unless we have a body. He is, and we next appear in court on Monday, January thirtieth. It's an, it's an unfounded rumor, it's not true. Thank you. Again, the uh, abuse began based on the evidence that we have in 2020, 2022. Or at least the grooming began in 2022. Are you able to say how far along she was on her pregnancy? We don't know because we don't have a body. I would much rather have had the case earlier. Uh, I don't know if the outcome would have been any different based on some of the things we've learned in the course of the investigation, uh, but we may have had an opportunity to recover even more evidence. But we're pretty confident uh, that the evidence that we have uh, is strong. We, we know it is, as, in fact. Um, but you, you can never have enough evidence. So if there's anything that could have gone a little bit better uh, with regards to the first time that we were brought in, I would have wanted to be brought in much earlier. For that reason. Just a background on uh, Reverend Spots. What is his age? And he's from Detroit. Mm -hmm. He's 41 years old. From, Detroit, from Highland Park, I believe. Yeah. Chief, as soon as you guys got word of this, you guys were out immediately, right? And you were even out searching. You guys set up command posts. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we took over the case uh, after we were briefed. Uh, we took uh, charge of the case, and our teams got engaged in it immediately and hit the ground running and uh, didn't look back. Well, uh, we, we make that public, we put it on our social media pages. Uh, there's, there's a number of misinformation, misconceptions about uh, missings. Uh, oftentimes what we have is kids that run away for a day or two. Um, they, they have a way of investigating these cases. They know the ones that, that uh, routine runaways, if you will. Uh, they still look, they still go out, but there's ways to do it, going to the school, social media with kids, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big benefit to us for our investigations. Um, and they also know when they become uh, serious missings, all missings are serious, but internally there's a title that it has been elevated to a serious missing and that involves a lot more work uh, and, and connection with the family. Each time we get a call, we go out to the home. Uh, regardless of whether or not it's uh, a, a person who has run away or a routine runaway uh, or serious missing. We check the home, we have found kids in the home hiding. Uh, so it's really complex and would take its own news conference to explain it. I will tell you this, they do a very good job. Uh, we've got thousands of kids this year that have been returned home. Uh, many of which uh, were run away, so we don't have a, a, a condition where people are being, kids are being picked up on the street and kidnapped. Uh, we did have an incident a couple of years ago where that happened, and the prosecutor charged that person. In fact, it was just recently convicted. Uh, so um, it's a lot that goes into it. We'd be more than happy to sit down and, and explain our process with you if you want to do something on the side. Assuming that inferring that investigators knew early on this was not a runaway case, or just if you could share some details of the fact that I'm assuming you knew pretty quickly Well, the prosecutor builds cases. We, we bring evidence to, to the prosecutor. We, we bring our investigation, and she makes the, the, pro, uh, the uh, charging decision. So I, won't, I don't want to get into that lane because it's not mine. I'll, I'll tell you, as I said earlier, the prosecutor has alluded to a lot, and there's a lot in the press release as to what goes into it. These folks looking at hours and hours of video evidence, and as, as the prosecutor indicated earlier, I don't think people recognize in this new age of modern technology what that has done to investigate a process. Uh, the days of, of old school investigations, some of that stuff still is, is valid and important. You gotta get out on the street, knock on doors, and talk to people. 
but what the digital world has brought us is new opportunities to find additional information and, and, and a cadence in which people communicate, right? Every, every one of us have these things in our pocket called cell phones that we use for everything. And if people go dark, uh, and they've never been dark, and particularly kids, they, they show their food, they show their school, they, they take selfies, and, and, and when that stops, that elevates uh, your concern as to why that is stopped. So it's a very complex process. These are the experts. I'm just the chief. Um, but, you know, again, we can sit down and talk to you about it in, in great detail, but a lot goes into it. And when you're talking about 111 gigabytes of information and, and text messages and dumping phones and, and literally going through methodically each one of the pages and the text messages and the communication as to when they stopped and the last word said that should have uh, prompted a response, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, I can't get into that, all those things elevate your curiosity uh, and, and brings you into other areas so it takes a lot more time but when you get it all right and you pull all the things together you become as confident as we are now with this case uh, and we're very 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 happy uh, that this 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 predator this child predator will not be able to hurt any more children and, and frankly any more women because we know that the, the women were a pathway to the children that's that period I'm gonna stop there for I get in trouble with the prosecutor all right. 506 gigabytes just from the cell phones this investigation is over, and we have charged the one and single person that's responsible for not only her death, the evidence show, but also for the sexual assaults that we have charged today. Oh, definitely can't go there. I'll lose my law license. Yeah, let me just say this, that if anyone that is watching this press conference um, right now or reads any of the coverage that I'm sure that you will give this has any reason to believe that they were a victim of his or that they know something else, we certainly welcome them to contact the Detroit Police Department. Thank you very much.